Uh, with regard to the disintegration of Yugoslavia, actually the U.S. role was not honorable, but it wasn't the worst. Uh, as uh, the U.S. in fact was in favor of uh, maintaining the uh, integrity of the former Yugoslavia, as incidentally were most people in the country in polls at that time. Uh, but it started to split off. The first one to split off was Slovenia. Okay, that was not a big problem. Slovenia is pretty much part of the West anyway, so a small conflict, but nothing much. The next one to split off was Croatia, and that was a big issue because I think about a third of the population of Croatia is Serbian, and this was then part of Yugoslavia. So when Croatia pulled out, uh, the Yugoslav army uh, entered to try to protect the integrity of the country and the Serbian minority. Well, at that point, the main villain was Germany. The Germans' initiative, they, Germany wanted to restore a traditional relationship with Croatia, which is not very pretty, if you happen to remember the Second World War. Uh, but uh, they wanted to restore that and, you know, kind of reestablish their position of influence in the Balkans. So they strongly supported Croatian separation without any rights for the Serbian minority, nothing. Uh, and uh, they brought the European Union along with them. And so it continued. Uh, Clinton more or less picked up uh, the, the Muslim, the Bosniak, so-called, the Muslim population of Bosnia, I suspect, because uh, they just wanted to have a horse in the race. I mean, everybody had their friends were going to pick that one. Uh, there was a chance for a political settlement in 1992, the Vance Owen plan. Uh, Clinton pressured Izzet Gabovic, the head of the, the Muslim community in Bosnia, to reject it. Now, that was a guarantee of a major war, you know, just a guarantee. And after that came a major war, maybe 100,000 people killed, uh, maybe 70,000 of them Bosniaks. And finally, there was a settlement, which is not very different from the Vance Owen plan, uh, but it was a settlement that was carried out at U.S. initiative, the Dayton plan. And uh, so the U.S. ends up with a substantial uh, degree of influence and control there. Well, that's <coughs> 1995. Uh, Serbia was still a problem. And the reason why Serbia was a problem is, in fact, described in uh, important doc documents that are known but not discussed. Uh, the, uh, there's an important book by uh, John Norris. He's a high official in the State Department. Uh, his, uh, his superior, immediate superior, was Strobe Talbot, who was the uh, Undersecretary of State for East European Affairs, so the top guy in the Clinton administration dealing with this region. Uh, Strobe Talbot, in his introduction to the book, says uh, uh, John Norris's book is based, this is about Kosovo, he says this book is based on Norris's complete familiarity with all relevant documents, and if you want to understand the thinking at the highest level of the Clinton administration, this is the book you have to read. Well, what does John Norris say? You take a look. He says, uh, the bombing of Serbia was not undertaken uh, out of concern for the plight of the Kosovo Albanians, which incidentally we know from masses of documentation about what was going on. He said it was because Serbia was not undertaking the required uh, social and economic reforms. Maybe kind of a euphemism to say, for saying it's the last holdout in Europe to our neoliberal designs. Okay, according to Strobe Talbot, that represents the highest uh, level of thinking in the Clinton administration. Well, I've quoted it a couple of times, and people have asked to Talbot and Norris about it, and they passionately reject this description. They say, oh, no, that's not what we thought at all. Well, you know, I don't read their minds. That's what they wrote. Okay, so you can make your own judgments. Uh, it's all on paper. You know, don't take my word for it. Read it. Uh, and uh, I suspect that that's pretty close to the reason for the bombing of Serbia. They're just not, it's like other it's, uh, another reason for believing is it's characteristic of the whole, just about the whole of uh, modern international relations and for, you know, with other countries when they were Britain, when they were the dominant world power. You do not tolerate disobedience. Disobedience is dangerous. It, first of all, you don't want it in the first place, but secondly, if somebody's disobedient, somebody else will get the idea and they'll be disobedient too. That's the virus contagion theory. 
uh, and uh, it just runs through the whole of uh, great power politics. Since the Second World War, that means mostly the United States, because the U.S. has been so dominant, but the same with other powers. And in fact, it, I, it's, I think it represents, like I said before that I'm kind of simple-minded, and I think with all the fancy talk in international relations theory, there's only one principle that I know of that seems to me to have any merit, and that's the mafia principle. Uh, international relations is very much like the mafia. Uh, the godfather does not accept disobedience. And for, you know, like if a small store, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's an important country or not. So suppose some small storekeeper uh, doesn't pay his protection money. Well, the godfather doesn't just send out his goons to pick up the money sends out the coons, goons to beat them to a pulp so that others will understand that disobedience is not acceptable. Uh, and we have a rich documentary record. I mentioned a little of it, but there's plenty more uh, to show that that's been a guiding principle uh, of great power politics um, any, anywhere you look. And it's an understandable principle. Of course, there's a task of intellectuals, and that's to write editorials like the one I quoted in the Boston Globe which is universal, I don't want to dump on them. Uh, our noble efforts uh, aren't working, so let's try something else. Uh, but if you look at the record, you know, it's the mafia principle. Successful defiance, you know, the threat of a good example, you've got to, sma you've got to punish the population. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably what's involved in Serbia, with regard to Serbia. And in fact, as Serbia moves towards you know, accepting the correct social and economic reforms, as they're called, uh, they'll be admitted into polite society. I mean, there's a residue of uh, antagonism because of the whole uh, you know, huge um, outburst of uh, emotion uh, stirred up by the educated classes, but uh, I suppose it'll go, go in that direction. <laughs>